It Takes Two is one of the best co-op video games you will ever play. Scratch that. To me, it's one of the best video games ever produced. Haste Light Studios has put their name on the map once again, creating a dynamic action-adventure platformer which I think is the quintessential experience you should use to introduce anybody to the world of video games. If you don't believe me, just look at these reviews. Everybody was raving about this video game as soon as it came out in March of 2021, to the point that it actually won the coveted Game of the Year award. So the question, mi familia, is simple. Why? Let's start by laying the groundwork with the story. Before we continue, no spoilers, okay? Yes, conscience, don't you worry, no major spoilers. Introducing May and Cody, your typical modern struggling couple. They've had a falling out, and now they need to explain to their little daughter Rose the fact that they're getting a divorce. Obviously, this is a bombshell for anybody, but the girl is super emotional. And in a wild twist of fate, she ends up crying on top of her crochet dolls, which represent her parents. This girl needs to be invited to Hogwarts immediately, because surprise, shouty, it transfers the parents' consciousness into the dolls. There you go, the premise is set. Mom and dad have to go through couples therapy as little dolls in order to try to save their marriage. Yes, I know what you're thinking, this seems simple from the outside, but this family-centered storyline is what truly grounds the entire game. You have to work together with player two in order to reach the end. Whether that be local or online, you can play it in different consoles, it's amazing in terms of accessibility. And hopefully, once you find your partner, you can save a marriage while you're at it. It's important to note that this game is anchored around Rose's experience. Of course, this experience allows the parents to empathize with their daughter and realize how heartbreaking of this trauma can be for a child. You as the player, or players in this case, never truly get to interact directly with Rose, but her presence dominates the story, especially the cutscenes. You also have some nice characters like Cutie and the Hammer that provide some levity and expand the world, if you will. But the main side character is Dr. Hakim, aka the Book of Love, which is trying to guide the player throughout this journey of trying to save their marriage, identify what their flaws are as individuals, and truthfully try to make Rose's life better. In fact, Dr. Hakim is actually the only one that's truly invested in saving this relationship because they wouldn't have done it otherwise. And he does so in the wackiest ways imaginable. All of this is to say that without Rose and Dr. Hakim, the narrative just wouldn't work. Essentially, it's a rom-com filled with great mechanics and amazing world building. Speaking of which, let's talk about It Takes Two's bread and butter, which is the mechanics, specifically the exhilarating platforming, witty banter, puzzles, and mini-games that take inspiration from some of the most classic and well-beloved games of all time. You have interesting puzzles that you have to solve collaboratively and they don't seem repetitive. In some cases, they actually test you, mostly because you have to work with your partner directly in order to solve them. In terms of the negatives, if I'm being really nitpicky because it's so hard to find one, none of the boss fights are truly that difficult, which is to be expected. I mean, the game is meant to be played with others. But if you're being silly like me and my player too, Nick and C have 23 were, uh, it can prove to be a bit of a challenge to get through these 15 hours in a timely manner. Me and my friend Nick were messing with each other the entire way through, and this is how it went. Oh! Yeah. It do be like that. This made the experience that extra bit sweeter. I didn't know how much I needed to prove myself through classic arcades and minigame elements. We had baseball, mini horse racing, pong, etch-a-sketch, and even hungry, hungry hippos. You see, gaming industry, mirame. Hey, look at me. Look at me right now. This is exactly the way that you're supposed to use nostalgia. Introducing elements of the old and bring something new to the table. The major key to success for this entire game is the fact that every single level offers a new tool set, ability, or or gimmick that makes sense within the new environment that you're going to explore. It doesn't feel stale at any point, which conveniently also extends to the co-op puzzles because those new abilities extend to those as well. This is about honing your skills quickly and trust each other to make the best of these new abilities as every single level comes through. Honestly, Mipana, I was foaming at the mouth to see what would come next, whether it be fighting penguins with a pirate ship, using a simple nail and hammer to cut through the craziest and wildly unsafe garage in existence, fly a paper plane with military squirrels, or of course, my personal favorite, getting a full raged out Warcraft RPG session with magic and swords. Even talking about it just makes me want to giggle. Best part is, the experience level doesn't matter. As long as you trust your partner and you hone your skills in time, you should be good. Let's move on to the visuals. Gorgeous lighting and shadow works the entire way. If you have any beefy components or a new console system, the lighting and the shadow work is going to leave you in awe. It's also got a fabulous use of color, a unique art style, and some dazzling visual effects. Remember, this is a living, breathing toy box that we're going through. The emotion and the stakes are elevated by the visual storytelling. 
Camera work on point as well, especially because it's split screen. You can see what your partner needs and perform accordingly, or just mess them up altogether. The music is also gorgeous. You get that Nintendo style immersive music during the calmer sections. It doesn't overpower the scenery and then blam, crescendoing action movie mega fest score for the boss fights, taking you straight to the win. The visuals and the sound design in this case accentuate the gameplay as we move through different locations that offer a fantastical version of Cody and May's house. Without forgetting that this is a love story and it's centered around the family and helping out Rose. Overall, playing this game with my friend truly made me appreciate the aspect of collaboration within gaming. Because in this case, you need them as much as they need you. Add on the platforming, puzzles, and minigame elements. This is the perfect introductory game for anybody in the family regardless of experience level. It's funny, entertaining, and heartwarming with a story that kept me hooked the entire way through. Yeah, none of it is truly extra difficult, but that was part of the experience. Every single corner of this game, whether it be on a technical, visual, or artistic level, looks like it was made with passion, as an homage to the games that came in the past and looking forward to the future. There is no way to sugarcoat this, Papa. This is the fattest 10 out of 10 I could possibly give. Next time I see Hazelight Studios come through with a new game, I'm getting the feeling that my waller is about to get lighter. But yeah, that's the video. See you later, familia.